Yep, pretty much. Uh, what was next, bro? Our main event of the evening, Randy Orton versus Dean Ambrose. Um, this match was awesome. Dean Ambrose had a freaking brilliant moment in this match. As I, I mean, dude, how well did I freaking call this? How well do I know Dean Ambrose? He was selling the shoulder still tonight, and on top of that, he had another spot tonight where he tried to put it back into place. He's going to keep selling that shoulder, man. He'll probably <laughs> sell that shoulder for as long as Seth Rollins has that money in the bank contract. Dude, we're going to start mistaking Dean Ambrose for Cowboy Bob Orton because he might as well have a cast for multiple years. Pretty much. I, I mean, Dean's consistency, but you know what? His consistency especially makes sense because he's a baby face right now. Oh. I, I, th I think it's genius that he's holding on to it because, look, it's one thing to, you know, allegedly suffer an injury within the confines of a match. You gain sympathy within that time slot that the 20 to 30 minutes that match is taking place. And then, you know, maybe the next night it could be focused on, it could not be focused on, but sooner or later it's going to go away. The fact that Dean realizes, hey, you know, people get hurt. Injuries don't go away overnight. And I have a real sympathy magnet here when people keep targeting it and I keep coming back is uh, is brilliant to me. I, I think it really shows Dean's knowledge of how to work a crowd, of how to lead a matchup, you know, as a baby face. I think as a heel, you know, the shenanigans will probably be uh, cut down. But I think it's a brilliant tactic when you're supposed to be the good guy. Uh, completely echo your sentiments that this was a brilliant match. I mean, Randy Orton had a beautiful drop kick in this match at one point, right to the shoulder. Uh, Dean's offense is always exciting to watch because he goes from just like fast paced to brutal and methodical. He looked like he was going to go for a regal stretch at one point on Orton, but instead he just went for the, uh, the gouge, you know, digging his fingers in Orton's face looked brutal. Seth Rollins on commentary, I thought was solid and on point because he was constantly just rebuffing this idea that he's afraid of Dean Ambrose while uh, touting that he is Mr. Money in the Bank. I felt like all the elements came together for a really brilliant main event. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the real highlight to me was Dean Ambrose's selling of the shoulder, but Rollins on commentary was gold. Orton felt like his old self again tonight, man. I mean, when was the last time you saw him throw that snap power slam that he does? I feel like this is the first time we've seen that in months. I would agree. It does feel like it's been a while. And more importantly, like the whole flow of the match was just great. I mean, these guys kept going Dude, back. That word back. that you just used flow that right there is Dean Ambrose's specialty. I don't care who his opponent is. You're going to be using that word to describe his matches for years. I believe it. I wholeheartedly believe it. I have no reason to doubt it. I just think Dean is a second to none quality performer uh, Orton is always, Orton is always great. And, the, you know, the fact that he really, the pushes that he got later in his career when he was becoming more established in this and that, the fact that that slowed down, and he's still like a top guy, but I don't think he, he doesn't feel like he's as in our faces and in our throats as, uh, as Cena is. I'm just really able to admire his work from an in-ring standpoint. Um, I would love to see these two have a feud. Uh, in the future, maybe over some gold, maybe not. Maybe they find their own reasons. But this is a great match, and I want to see more from these two. This almost gave me like a Christian Orton vibe, didn't it? I felt the exact same way, dude, with back and forth, especially like Orton powering out of dirty deeds and then keep coming at it. Like, yeah, it really was on the level of those Christian Orton matches where it's just, it's almost like a chess match back and oh. forth. What guy is going to do what? Excellent stuff. I mean, if we can get a series of matches like that between these two, uh, sign me up, please. I'll have my signature right next to yours. D uh, D Regal said it, and I and I go and I hark all the way back to Regal's tweet. <laughs> yep. Dean, yep. Dean everybody's Ambrose is everybody's perfect, perfect opponent ten. for the next ten years. Yep. Yeah, verbatim, exactly. And he's absolutely right. And and Dean Ambrose is once again earning that compliment in this match. After the match, because we get, didn't get a definitive winner, because at one point uh, Orton knocked into Rollins because of uh, something that uh, Dean Ambrose initiated. Rollins comes to get him some. They're putting the boots to Ambrose. But then uh, Ambrose gets an ally and a very familiar face, Ashton. Well, I mean, the way that the match actually ended was Ambrose was getting ready to do a suicide dive onto Orton. And then Rollins, as Ambrose was crossing the ropes to actually do the dive, Rollins cracked him over the head with the briefcase. So, uh, right. yeah, that that ended the match. And because the match was over then, Roman Reigns could come out to help Ambrose out. So, 
we the, the, it's almost like they're teasing for a, a tag team match to happen at um not SummerSlam at Battleground, and honestly, I wouldn't even be disappointed if they went there because none of these four guys really has a specific like one thing that he has to do at Battleground. So if you want to put them all in the same match, fine by me. Absolutely, I feel like if they do, uh, you know. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins at Battleground. I wouldn't mind it because you know they're going to have another match at SummerSlam. Yep. Uh, really, at this point, because I've heard the rumors, I know it, it, it's been like Triple H, Roman Reigns, SummerSlam. And to be honest, I'm going to go against rumors in this case and, and say that I still believe it's going to be Roman Reigns, Triple H. But from what I've read, it may be Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton. Uh, hell, SummerSlam is Randy Orton's pay-per-view in my mind, so I think he'd deliver on all fronts, and that would be a great match. But yeah, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose have their match at Battleground. Maybe they don't even go all out. Maybe they hold back a little bit. You know, maybe there's a DQ finish or something. Then at SummerSlam, you go out and you claim your match of the year candidate because they could do it with ease. So good. We've seen a Rollins-Ambrose 35-minute match, and it was amazing. Absolutely. That's why I'm saying they could do it with ease, just like, uh, again, you know, help came for Ambrose with ease because it came in the form of uh, his uh, former S.H.I.E.L.D. cohort, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns comes in, and as you'd expect, he cleans house, takes care of Rollins. Orton tries to neutralize Reigns, but to no avail, he eats a Superman punch. And, uh, yeah, Shield and Ambrose, uh, Shield and Ambrose, Roman Reigns and Ambrose, see, I've still got Shield on the brain, I always will. Well, I mean, he practically is at this point. He has the same gear and the same theme music. What has changed about Roman Reigns to separate him from the Shield? He's the only one who I feel like isn't even, I, I'd love to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, oh, well, Ashton, you know, he's inching towards a new identity, but he isn't even inching. Like, a, a snail would surpass him in forging an original identity. He still is. Like, if I was to turn on my TV and say the last thing I saw was Roman Reigns just putting his fist out, I would think, oh, well, he must be representing the shield in some encounter or some conflict. Uh, yeah, you know, like that's how deeply entrenched he still is in this shield identity. He needs to break away from it. Um, if, you know, I, Honestly, I don't know, it almost felt weird for him and Ambrose to be sit, standing in the same ring, like tall, like standing tall together, because Ambrose has forged such a unique identity since the shield breakup, and Reigns just hasn't budged. It would have made more sense to me to see these two guys standing tall if they both had the idea in their head to go after Rollins. Right. But we could see they both had very different motivations. For Dean Ambrose, his motivation is Rollins, Rollins, Rollins. I'm going to rip his face off, which I freaking love that, by the way. Uh, Reigns said, hey, Rollins is only part of the problem. My focus is going to be on Randy Orton and Triple H. And Randy Orton kind of diverged into becoming WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So they had very distinct motivations, very distinct ambitions, uh, you know, and that really made them have the very, uh, very simple, very casual break that wasn't even really emphasized, just, you know, different goals. Let's go our own way. And seeing them stand tall together tonight, I completely agree with you, Ashton. For me, uh, I, I'm going to use this word. I, I found it to be kind of jarring. A little bit, because you see Dean Ambrose in his original garb with the identity that he's forged, and you see Roman Reigns pretty much uh, personifying at this point the very remnants of the shield. I mean, what is wrong with this picture? One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, yeah, you could go that route, and it's not really out of place. Uh, I hope Roman Reigns... Find something that clicks a little bit better than this soon, because I'm not saying it's starting to annoy me or anything like that. I'm just saying for the sake of Roman Reigns' career, it's something that needs to happen. I want the thoroughbred. You and me both. I'd love the thoroughbred. Hell, people have said, and you know, it, I'm sure it makes sense on a lot of fronts considering his descent and everything. Uh, but you know, there is a lot of uh, the Rock in Roman Reigns, and seeing him on NXT. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I mean, I, I love what he does. Hell, it seems like every other episode of Twitter, well, I, I quote his line. the thoroughbred Roman Reigns is more Hollywood rock than The Miz could ever hope to be. That's it. I mean, that's all you really need to hear. Uh, I was going to say, you know, he's quotable because it seems like every other episode of Twitter, well, I, I quote his one line. Uh, you know, insert thing here. It's irrelevant. 
<laughs> and you know, it gets you every time. I'm waiting for the day that it doesn't get you. <laughs> but uh, and it's just because I imagine him saying it, and the facial expression he made when he said it just cracks me up. <laughs> oh man, that's terrific. But yeah, you know, Roman Reigns, there is a star there. If if WWE didn't believe that, and if we didn't believe that, I don't think we'd all be rooting for him, and I don't think he'd be getting the spot that he is now. But I don't want him getting that spot as, like, the muscle of the shield or the enforcer of the shield. I want him to get that spot. I mean, as you've called him, Ashton, the thoroughbred Roman Reigns, you know me, I, I call him the Mastodon Roman Reigns. But get some new gear, get some new music, and, and get out there and spear everybody's heads off. Go it do it. It doesn't even need to be new music. If you would go back to the music that he was using as the thoroughbred in the next year, it would work so well because it was so intimidating. Like, when that music hit, it was like, oh, crap. Like, we need to duck and cover our heads because freaking Roman Reigns is coming out. I agree, man, but I mean, you know that usually when they make the transition from NXT to I NXT, know, yeah. you don't gotta tell me. I'm just <laughs> trying to live in the past. Let me be. <laughs> I know, we're, we're so hopeful, aren't we? I noticed that a lot on Twitter. We'll be talking about something we'll be like, it was a better time. It was a simpler time. Remember Leo Kruger, John? Yeah, Leo, Leo Kruger. But uh, but no, that was SmackDown. Ashton, do you have any concluding remarks about anything that you want to make? Let's go. All right. With that said, let's get right into our next segment. High spots and low shots. And my low shot, and I say this with no absence of malice. Yes! Is The Miz. Oh, you know what, dude? Screw originality. I agree. We have a dual low shot. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. You're still so irrelevant. Like, if Zack Ryder is, is really going to be very, used very sparingly on television, Miz is my new Zack Ryder. Honestly, honestly, if I had complete creative control, I would get all up in this Miz-Jericho matchup this Monday. I would have it last 10 seconds. Jericho ducks a clothesline, code breaker pinfall. <laughs> it's, no, it's... no, 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 no. I would make it last 30 seconds. Jericho ducks a really sloppy clothesline attempt, code breaker, lion salt, walls of Jericho, but then the referee isn't looking to see Miz tap out, so Jericho goes over, taps him on the shoulder, turns him around, and then locks in the lion tamer. <laughs> That was oddly specific, but you know what? I love it. Um, one thing I do fear is I, I hope Bray Wyatt doesn't interfere to give Miz the victory because that would make me cry inside. Um, but I don't think Bray will because he understands that Miz needs to be destroyed. So with that said, yeah, Miz is my low shot. You co-signed. So I, I just guess the realized I don't know if there's anything in the world that I would rather see than Bray Wyatt delivering a senton to the Miz, but really stiff. I guess with you co-signing on to my low shot, um, the ball goes back to me. I mean, were you serious? Do you still want your low shot a uh, little time, or are you really going to go with that? No, I'm going with that. All right, you're going with that. So my I mean, high... really, who, who else would be my low shot? It's not like I can call Eva Marie my low shot, because we all knew she sucked long before this show. I can't really call Paige my low shot. I can't call AJ my low shot. It could be. You know what? Just, Just – out of consolation, I'll say Damian Sandow is my low shot because he showed up, got a decent reaction, and then got squashed. Okay. Uh, high spot. You know what? I'm going to say my high spot is Bo Dallas. Wow. Yeah. Really? I mean, all he did was beat Diego. Who cares? Well, he also took care of Torito, though, and for that, he's forever in my debt. Uh, we you found like out. Torito? I really don't care for him at all. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with JBL. All, all bulls need to be stopped. Bulls and rabid bunny rabbits. Um, but you know what? Yeah, but, but I'm, I'm going to stick with Bo. I, I thought I was going to change my mind to somebody else. But Bo is getting an Intercontinental Championship match at Battleground. Granted, it's in a battle royal, so he's in there with a whole mix of guys. Won his match, 12 and Bo. And it wasn't just any match. It was a match he dedicated to Little Daniel. So it was important. <laughs> And, uh, you know, takes out El Torito, which, you know what? I would like to think WWE did that because they saw slowly but surely that Bo was getting over, and I think they wanted to kill that somehow. Oh. I don't know if that was the way to do it, but at least they're conscious of the environment and they're trying to change it. So, yeah, Bo's my high spot. 
All right, my high spot because I had to give up on the Miz being my low shot because you stole that from me. I'm going to make Chris Jericho my high spot to make up for it. I see. You know, it, it's funny that you say that uh, I, I stole that low shot from you and then you pick Chris Jericho who's accused everybody of stealing things from him. So it kind of really fits like a hand in the glove. Well, I'm glad you understood the joke, John. Now let's move on. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, completely agree. <laughs> Jericho had a solid night. I mean, <laughs> silence Miz again. Can't really say anything about that. Uh, getting a match on Monday. That's terrific. Not much more you can say than that. Not only did you steal my low shot, but you also stole all of the momentum that joke had by explaining it. Uh, I made it look better than you ever could. Anyway. Who are you, Dolph Ziggler? <sighs> he wishes he was me. But more importantly, we can now move on to the next segment. My personal favorite, 30 Second Hot Seat. With such amazing enthusiasm. So, what's your softball? I, I mean, I mean, hard pitch, you know, this week. What do we, what do we got? There are going to be 30 people in the Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal. Name them all. Go. Just kidding. <laughs> I was about to, too. You should have let it go. Um, all right. Well, oh, man. Uh, my, you know what? I don't really have anything prepared for this week. I'm kind of slacking a little. Uh, let's see. 30 second hot seat for SmackDown. Um, oh man, this is, this is way more difficult than it should be. Okay. 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 So John Cena is the WWE champion. And a lot of people think that Brock Lesnar is going to win the championship off of him at SummerSlam, right? Right. Okay. So that is the obvious choice. Now, Not counting Brock Lesnar, who do you think could possibly win the title off of John Cena and when? 30-second hot seat starts now. Okay, since Daniel Bryan's out, he's automatically disqualified. You know what? Just because I can't think of anybody better at the moment, I'll give you two choices. Randy Orton and potentially Rusev if they want to go the route that you've talked about in the past. If it's Randy Orton, I say give it till hell in a cell. If it's Rusev, give it until Survivor Series. Is that it? Yep. Well, see, now I know I need to prepare in the future, because when I'm not prepared, you really do get softballs. I mean, those are the best answers I could think of. I mean, I'd love to hear other people's opinions on it, but yeah, I mean, Rusev for Well, that's the thing, though. Like, generally, the whole point is Lesnar's winning at a SummerSlam, so... Right. I mean, no real point in discussing it beyond that. I just wanted to figure something out to give you at least some kind of challenge. But. Hey, you know, there, there's always next week. You know, hey, not every week uh, can be like that, that that fastball. That was the word I was thinking of earlier. Um, and, you know, like, yeah, this was a relatively simple one. But then again, dude, like, there's not really much uh, trickery that can be uh, confounded, I mean, with what's going on in the landscape. And that's actually a good thing. Like, things seem to be pretty straightforward. Like, hey, this is a story. We're going with it, and they know just when to do unpredictability, and they know just when to pull it back and just let the story tell itself. It's, it's a personally, great time. I personally yeah. always like being able to come up with good opinion-based 30-second hot seats because then there's no real right answer, and it always gets a good discussion started, but I just couldn't think of one. Hey, dude, again, always next week, and you know what? Hey, you know, For John Cena, that may look grim because you know Seth Rollins is waiting in the wings, and he's got three people breathing down his neck on Battleground, so let's hope he's saying the same thing to himself. But with that said, do you have anything else you want to say about SmackDown, or can we wrap this up? Hooray, SmackDown. All right, this has been SmackDown. This has been TwitWow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today. I'm John. That's my Cole Wharton commentary, Ashton. Guys, be sure to comment and subscribe on YouTube, discuss on Pweetoff, and we will see you again for our Monday Night Raw review where hopefully, with fingers crossed, Chris Jericho outright squashes The Miz. We'll see you there.